Hi there. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can find sounds you want from the browser and then insert them into the channel window and step sequencer. From there, I will go over the basics of the step sequencer and how to create a drum beat. Now before we start, so we're all on the same page, so to speak, let's open a totally empty project. The easiest way to do this is to go to the file menu at the top, then go to new from template, we're going to go to minimal, and then empty second from the bottom. Now that we have an empty project, we are ready to fill it up with our own sounds, which we will find from the browser. Now the browser is a tool that allows you to access your samples, generator presets, projects and more, all from one window. By default, it's located on the left here. Now if you can't see it, you can toggle it on and off by clicking this button here. Or alternatively, you can find it from the view menu at the top and finding browser. For a quick shortcut, you can also toggle it on and off by pressing the F8 key. In this tutorial, we are going to find some drum samples from the browser so we can make a beat. FL Studio comes with a number of preloaded sample sounds that we can use. To find them, find packs in the browser list. From here, we can find sounds under a number of different categories. Drum sounds in particular can be found under dance, FPC, hip hop, real drum kits, and vintage. For the lazy among you, you can also find the number of pre-made drum loops under the loops category here. Today we're going to find some drums from the hip hop category. When we click on it, a long list comes up. Now each of these items on the list is a drum sample, ordered according to what sort of drum they are sampled from. We have hi-hats, kicks, snares and so on. To make a typical drum beat, we're probably going to need one of each type. Now before we load any in, we can preview each one simply by clicking on the name. So we can go through them all and pick ones we like. Now once we have found a sound we like, we can load it into the channels window and step sequencer simply by clicking and dragging it over like this. Now that I've picked my hi-hat, let me find a kick that I like. We'll pick this one for now. And a snare. Let's choose this one. Now that I've loaded three sounds into the channels window, and each sound has become a channel in my project, let me talk to you a bit about this window. This area here is what houses the different sounds and instruments that you are using in your piece of music. To the left here, we have knobs for adjusting the volume and panning for each channel. Further to the left, we have a button that when clicked will mute each channel, which can be toggled on and off. If we click on the main box for each channel, the channel settings box will appear. We'll be talking about the channel settings box in another tutorial. The green light to the right of this box here represents which channel or channels are currently selected. When we have a channel selected, we can do things like copy and paste information from it, among some other things. Now to change which channel is selected, simply click next to a different channel, like this. To select multiple channels, hold down the shift key whilst clicking. The step sequencer is primarily used for sequencing non-pitched sounds such as drums. But before we go on to that, remember in the last tutorial how I mentioned in FL Studio we usually create our full tracks out of combinations and series of patterns. Well what you are looking at here is essentially an empty pattern. Now let me direct you to this box here with a number 1 in it. The 1 represents what number pattern we are currently working on. So right now, we are working on pattern number 1. We can change pattern numbers by clicking on the box and dragging up or down. In FL Studio, you can use up to 999 different patterns in one project, but I doubt you'll ever use that many. Now let me direct you to this little section here. 
This is where we toggle between pattern mode and song mode by clicking like this. When it is set to pattern mode, when we hit play on the transport here, we will only hear the selected pattern. When it is in song mode, we will hear our whole arrangement. We don't have an arrangement yet, so we're going to leave it in pattern mode for now. Now let's go on to making our first pattern. This here is the step sequences section of this window. You can see here a grid. Now let me break it down for you. By default, in FL Studio, each pattern represents one bar of music. We can see here from left to right, this bar is divided into four different sections using colors. Now each section represents a beat in the music. Now, if we take a look at each beat, we can see that it's divided into four again. This will give us 16th note subdivisions, so the whole bar is essentially divided into 16 different notes. Now if we do want to change the number of beats in a particular pattern, the easiest way to do this is to use this box here just like the other boxes, which we can add or remove beats as we see fit. I'm going to leave it on 4 for now. Now let's say I want my kick drum on every beat of the music. I would want to place a kick at the start of each beat section. To do this, I simply left click on the box in the grid where I want the kick to be heard. Notice how it lights up. To remove the kick, I simply right click it. Now I'm going to add the rest of them like this. Now let's hear our pattern by clicking play at the top. To make it faster or slower, I will adjust the tempo box here. Let's make it slower. Or faster. Now I want to add my snare drum. Snare drums are commonly heard on beats number 2 and 4. Let's add them there like so. Here's number 1, so we're going to put one on beat number 2. Not three, but four. Let's hear this pattern. First I guess I want to turn down the tempo a little bit. I left it a bit higher before. Let's put it back to 140. Now let's hear the pattern. Oh yeah, that's really pumping. Finally, I'll add my hi-hat. A common pattern for a hi-hat might be two to each beat. So let's add them in like that now. So one, two, one, two, one, two, and so on. Let's hear my pattern. Okay, now it's starting to sound like a real drum beat. Now that I have my admittedly not very good drum beat, I'm going to show you how to use velocities to make your drums sound less robotic. Now for some styles of music, such as dance music, the drums don't have to sound like someone is actually playing them. But if we want to add a little organic quality to our drums, we want to change some of the velocities. Now velocity is usually how loud a sound will be played, and in the context of drums, it's going to be how hard they are being hit. Now a real drummer is unlikely to be hitting each drum at the same velocity at all times. This is why we often want to add a bit of variation into the velocities of our drums to make them sound less robotic. First off, let's mute my kick and snare drums by clicking the buttons to the left of the channels. Now when I click play, you should only be able to hear the hi-hat. Notice how each instance of the hi-hat being played is at exactly the same volume. You should be able to tell that this is not how a real drummer might play it. Let's go about changing some of the velocities. Start by selecting the channel you want to edit by clicking here, and then click this button here, the graph editor. What comes up is a pink bar graph showing the velocities corresponding with each of the 16 notes available on the step sequencer. Note that we can also adjust this bar here to modify different parameters from velocity. But today we're just going to work with velocity. All we had to do to change a velocity for a certain note is just left click on the graph where we want to put it. Higher or lower. To start with, today I want to make every second note played to be quieter. So I don't want to edit this one, but I do want to edit this one. Quiet, loud, quiet, loud, quiet. 
There we go. Let's play it now. Notice how it's already starting to sound more organic. Stay tuned for my next video where I'll go into detail a bit more on the step sequencer and then talk about the piano roll.